Patrick's Day or Happy St. Patty's Day. That's Patty with a D, not T. I'll explain that a little later. Well, I'm Fun Guy the Entertainer. Uh, welcome to Fun Guy's Kitchen, or my kitchen, which is Fun Guy's Kitchen. Today we're going to do, of course, corned beef and cabbage. That's what you do on St. Patrick's Day. Um, I've never done it in an Instant Pot before. Um, this is sort of an experiment, although I did some research and I'm pretty sure this is going to work. All you need is, of course, a electric pressure cooker. This happens to be the Instapot brand. Um, works very good. Make sure you have your rack on the inside, okay? First thing you want to do is you want to put in two cups of water. It's very simple, two cups of water. Then add one beer. Doesn't matter what kind of beer it is. Obviously, more Irish, go towards, you know, stout of some sort. But this is really simple. And put in four cloves of garlic. I mean, which is roughly an eighth of a cup. I have an eighth of a cup in here, so I'll put it in here. Unfortunately, when I do it this way, it sticks to the cup, so that's kind of silly. I should have just squirted it in there, but I'm trying to show people measurements a little bit more. All right, pretty simple there. Rinse the garlic off my fingers. And of course, we have our corned beef brisket. Uh, this one happens to be a point cut. Um, some people like the other kind better. Uh, it does not really matter to me. I like them both. The point cut happened to have been on sale at the pig. Yes, the pig means Steinbrink's Piggly Wiggly. My store, of course, is the Dullivan location. But they have four. And I just realized I didn't cut that back far enough. I have a small hole in the corner. But I didn't cut across the top. There we go. That's more like it. And then you... Pull the package out, or the meat out of the package, I should say. And there should be a seasoning packet. There it is there. Make sure you don't put that on the bottom so you don't see it. Now, some people pour the extra juice out. I like to use it. I pour it right back in the container. Just like that. Then, I guess we're going to need the scissors again. Sprinkle the seasoning across the top. Then you put the cabbage in. Now, because it's a vegetable and it's a pressure cooker, you want big chunks. See how big this is? If you don't use big chunks, you're gonna have just goo in here when you're done. Okay. Looks like I can add one more set of two. Nope, just one, that's it. So, nice and full. Let me rinse my fingers off here real quick. Put the lid on. Make sure your pressure thing is off to the side and set ready to rock and roll. Um, I'm not sure exactly how to show you this, so what I'm gonna do is I'll take a picture like I did last time. Uh, you go to your front of your unit and you want to go to pressure cook and you set the timer for 90 minutes. You just keep pushing the plus sign until it hits 90. It's a lot of pushing. There might be a fast way to do this. I'm still new at the pressure cooker thing here. So 90 minutes is one hour and 30 minutes. There it is. I don't know if I have to push anything else on this. All right. This should beep in a minute saying that it's, there it goes. All right, it is now set. It's gonna take roughly 15 minutes to get up to temp. So you're talking about an hour and 45 minutes before this is you know, starting to when it's done. So plan accordingly. Um, it's, and I think I forgot to start my other camera which is going to screw everything up. But anywho, uh, if it does, uh, we'll just have to punt. All right, oh, explaining the St. Paddy's Day. People here in America think it's P-A-T-T-Y. It is not. It is P-A-D-D-Y. The, sp uh, the, the spelling of Patrick in Ireland, which is pronounced Patrick, is P-A-D. So that's why it's St. Paddy's Day. So you just learned some trivia. 
If you had already been watching our my other show, What Happened to the World Today, you probably already know that because we talked about that on our St. Patty's Day show then. All right, so that's all there is to it. And then when this is all done, we'll come back and show you what we ended up with. Thanks so much. We'll see you in a bit. All right, fun guys, foodies. Uh, the timer, well, not the timer, but the, uh, I guess it is a timer. Went off on the Instapot, which means that, that it is done. So what you want to do, since we're going to, I don't want to put the steam right on here. I'm going to turn this off to the side here. You turn this off so it bleeds. I think I showed you that on the last time I did one of these. Let this, all the steam escape. Once the steam escapes, it'll long lock and you can open up and we'll show you what it looks like. I did forget to mention a couple different things. Once we're done with this, we're going to take it out and put it in a pan and cover it for 10 to 15 minutes to let it firm up a little bit. Otherwise, it's going to have nothing but shred. If you want it shredded, nothing wrong with that either. You just take it out, shred it up, and serve it. Um, kind of like pulled pork would look. This would be like, that's what this will turn into. But it's a lot easier to slice if you let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes off to the side. Um, I think that's pretty much it. We're going to be doing our drawing later tonight. I told you that I was going to do the drawing for um, uh, the dinner for two and guest appearance on the show on St. Patrick's Day, which is today. Um, so we're going to do that, but I didn't put everything together before the show because I was running around because I was busy today. So I'll do that, and then on our next show, I'll let you know who the winner was. Uh, and of course, don't forget, Steinbrink's Piggly Wiggly, which I mentioned earlier. They are the sponsors of our meat department. Uh, from the meat department, they sponsor our meat. Um, we got a couple of things going on uh, coming up because it's spring. Oh, by the way, spring is, um, oh, this is going to come out the first day of spring. How cool is that? So, happy spring, everyone. Um, this is just about done. I'm waiting for it to make the clicking noise. I'll move this back over here so we can see right in here. Surprised it hasn't clicked yet. It's really, really soft whisper already. Oh, I might have clicked and I didn't hear because, nope, it's still locked. All right, here we go. All right, ta-da! Look at that. This is what it looks like done. You can see that the, uh, the the cabbage is cooked, and actually, you know what I'm doing? I'm gonna poke it because I've always this is of course the first time we're doing this. Like I said, I should have had my big uh, meat fork handy. We'll use this one here because the big one's in the thing. All right, yep, it feels like it's done. All right, that's all there is to it. So I'll take pictures again as usual once it's put on the plate so you see what that looks like. I hope you enjoyed another really, really quick show. Uh, I've got a baking show coming up again really soon. I'm going to try a four-layer cake. I haven't done one of those actually ever. I've done two and three layers, but never a four-layer. So we're going to try doing a four-layer cake. How cool is that? So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Or like, subscribe, and share. Subscribe. You know what I mean. Tell your friends about us. We need more people. Um, I'm trying to get a cookware sponsor, and, and they're going to, of course, want to see a little bit higher views than I have, uh, which is obviously makes sense to me. So, once again, thanks for coming to my kitchen. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I'm Fun Guy the Entertainer, cooking for you. Hello, Fun Guys foodies. I decided to try something a little bit different. Whenever I do an experimental dish, like using the instant uh, instant pot instant pot instant pot that's what it's called an instant pot uh, for the corned beef and cabbage. Uh, if anything comes up, I thought I'd you'd do a uh, little segment on at the end of the video. So here's what we're gonna do. Um, I had mentioned that it's okay to pour the juice from the bag into the instant pot with the corn that the corned beef was soaked in. Do not do that um, when you're cooking it in a pan. Everything floats to the top. Peachy Keen, Finding Nanny, you scoop that mess off. But in the Instant Pot, uh, Instant Pot, I keep calling it Instant, instant Pot, um, the rack that the meat sits on got coated with that stuff when it got cooked. What a pain to clean it. It's just not worth it. That little, uh, there's more than enough flavor. You do not need that juice. So uh, I would recommend uh, whenever you cook corned beef in a uh, uh, electric, pressure cooker or probably any kind of pressure cooker um, pour the juice off and actually might want to rinse it off too 
I've, uh, I've heard other people do that because they didn't like the little slimy stuff, but the slimy stuff to me added more flavor when you're boiling it for three hours. But this doesn't do that. Now, here's the cool thing about the experiment. I am used to doing uh, corned beef like most people. You cook it for three hours, and what it does is it turns the meat into a gelatinous state, and it's very, very tender and tasty that way. The problem is it's almost impossible to slice. As you can see by the picture behind me, it sliced incredibly well. The, um, the fat was not gelatinous, but yet it was still cooked and not tough and chewy. That's the problem that you, you have with corned beef. If you don't cook it enough, usually that fat is tough and chewy. So the Instant Pot was a success if you make those modifications. Do not pour the juice out of the bag and be prepared to um, have it, it's, it literally, instead of boiling it for three hours, it pressure cooked for an hour and a half. Granted, it takes about 15 minutes, so figure an hour and 45 minutes, but still you're saving uh, an hour and 15 minutes of cook time. Um, and you don't have to keep checking the water level because the pressure cooker does keep the liquid in there. Um, it loses virtually nothing. Uh, the new designs are fantastic. Um, so that's one of the problems I had when I was cooking corned beef in my big pots. If I didn't have enough water in there, uh, it would boil off and then the top of the meat would be sitting on the top and it would get dry. Eh, not so good. So um, experiment a success with those modifications. So thanks for watching the show and hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to let other people know.